Hi, welcome back to my channel, Fabulously Frugal and Fancy. I'm Brandy, and we're doing our Vlogmas right now, day three of Vlogmas. Welcome back. I hope that you've joined us for the first two days. And on day three, if you have not joined, we I will have the link uh, in the description box for the playlist for the previous Vlogmas days. And this Vlogmas, we are doing a devotional book called Bring on the Mary. Uh, this book is listed in the description box below. I found mine on Amazon, and it's just a 25 devotionals to go through uh, for Christmas, and I think that it's it's really good just to focus on the reason for the season, but also uh, walks through many different things about uh, stress and, and being overwhelmed by the holidays when we just need to focus and uh, just stop and breathe and remember the true reason for the season. So. Without any further chatting, we are going to go ahead and get started on day number three. This devotional is called, It Takes a Village. People shine in different ways around Christmas time. I'm a Christmas card girl myself. I love sending out fun and beautiful card that captures the joy of the holiday with my family. Maybe you're creative in the, in the way you decorate your Christmas tree or you make really good sugar cookies. Maybe you've got a knack for picking super thoughtful gifts for people you love. Everyone has something to bring to the table. My favorite way to throw a Christmas party is to ask every guest to bring something that brings them joy. Our friend brings the appetizer. Another friend helps me decorate before the party. Another brings beautiful flowers to make the space more festive. It should be a season to celebrate the ways we bring joy to each other and use the gifts God's given us. It reminds me of Jesus' birth in a way. Everyone has a role to play. Everyone con contributed to the story, but still at the center of it all was Jesus. His birth ultimately gave meaning and purpose to the, new, to the profound role Mary played in carrying him in her body for nine months. <clears throat> the shepherd's presence in the field doing what they were made to do allowed them to see the angel and become messengers of Jesus' arrival. Even the donkey created by God did holy work carrying Jesus' mother to the inn that day. Christmas is a time to celebrate the meaning and purpose that Christ's birth gives our everyday lives. A simple Christmas card can provide encouragement to someone who is going through a hard time, filling their home with smiling faces and reminders of how much they matter. A plate of Christmas cookies might be just what the mother of three kids under three needs to find that quiet five minutes she's been desperate for. Christmas is a season of joy, and what greater joy is there than using the gifts God has given you to bless others and celebrate the birth of Jesus? 1 Corinthians 12, 26 and 27 uh, says, And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. For one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. We are created to live and enjoy life within a group of people who are different from us and help us experience the kingdom of God in new and beautiful ways. This Christmas, think about how God made you. What about you brings God and others so much joy? Is it your famous Christmas dinner? Your warm hospitality that makes people feel at home? Or the gift that shows you really care? Or maybe it's something less tangible. Is it a knowing hug for a friend who's hurting this Christmas season? Or the compassionate words in a card to a friend who's lost a loved one? Is it your love for serving those who have left less than you in a time that is focused on attaining more? Maybe it's providing a verse of encouragement or a listening ear to someone dreading another difficult Christmas dinner with her family. God gifts each of us in different ways, but each gift makes this season rich and full of joy. Spend time this year thinking about how you can bring joy to others through your unique gifts. Relish the fact that God made you specifically to bless the world in a way only you can, whether it's through words, actions, prayer, or service. Be confident in your ability to spread the love of Jesus in your own unique and beautiful way. I think uh, that's pretty powerful. A lot of us, women especially, we are our own worst critics, and we just sometimes think there's no value in what we have to offer. But just remember that God made you specifically, and he made you exactly who he wanted you to be. So just use the gifts that he gave you. Uh, now we're going to move on to the 
story portion. Sorry, I need to take a little drink of my coffee. Why the Chimes Rang by Raymond McAlder. There was once in a faraway country a wonderful church that stood on a hill in the midst of a great city. And every Sunday, as well as on sacred days like Christmas, thousands of people climbed the hill to its great archways. At one corner of the church was a great gray tower, and at the top of the tower was a chime of Christmas bells. They had hung there ever since the church had been built and were the most beautiful bells in the world. It was the custom on Christmas Eve for all the people to bring to the church their offerings for the Christ child. And when the best offering was laid on the altar, there used to come sounding through the music of the choir the Christmas chimes far up in the tower. <coughs> Excuse me. But for many long years, they had never been heard. Every Christmas Eve, the rich people still crowded to the altar, each one trying to bring some better gift than any other. But although the service was splendid and the offerings plenty, only the roar of the wind could be heard far up in the stone tower. A number of miles from the city lived a boy named Pedro and his little brother. They knew very little about the Christmas chimes, but they had heard of the service in the church on Christmas Eve and, <clears throat> and had a secret plan to go to see the beautiful celebration. The day before Christmas was bitterly cold. Pedro and little brother slipped quietly away early in the afternoon. Before nightfall, they had trudged so far hand in hand that they saw the lights of the city, of the big city, just ahead of them. They were about to enter one of the gates when they saw something dark on the snow near the, their path. It was a poor woman who had fallen just outside the city, too sick and tired to move on. Pedro knelt down beside her and tried to rouse her, even tugging at her, at her arm a little. It's no use, little brother, said Pedro. You'll have to go on alone. This woman will freeze to death if nobody cares for her. When you come back, you can bring someone to help her. I will keep her from freezing and perhaps get her to eat the bun that is left in my pocket. You can easily find your way to the church, and you can see and hear everything twice, once for you and once for me. I am sure the Christ child must know how I should love to come with you and worship him. And oh, if, I, if you get a chance, take this little silver piece of mine and lay it down for my offering when no one is looking. In this way, he, he hurried little brother off to the city and winked hard to keep back the tears. The great church was a wonderful place that night. At the close of the service came the procession of the offerings to be laid at the altar. Rich men marched proudly up to offer their gifts of jewels and gold to the Christ child. And last of all walked the king, who took from his beard, I'm sorry, who took from his head the royal crown, all set with precious stones, and laid it gleaming on the altar. Surely, everyone said, we shall hear the bells now, for nothing like this has ever happened before. But still, only the cold wind was heard in the tower. The choir began the closing hymn. Suddenly, the organist stopped playing. The old minister was holding up his hand for silence. As the people strained their ears to listen, there came softly the sound of the chimes in the tower. So much sweeter were the notes than anything that had been heard before. Then all the people stared straight at the altar to see what great gift had awakened the long silent bells. But all, <clears throat> all that the nearest of them saw was the childish figure of little brother who had crept softly down the aisle when no one was looking and had laid Pedro's little piece of silver on the altar. Sometimes it's the small things and as we all know, it's the matter of your heart as you're giving and not the amount or the size of the gift. Take this time to think about, sorry, we're moving on to the activity part. So if you have your notebook or even this book, you could write in this. I'm going to write in a notebook so that I can save this book and use it again. Take this time to think about the group of people you are surrounded by and how you can learn from and benefit from the wonderful ways God has gifted them. Fill in the blanks with names and attributes of your family and friends. Next to each name, write that person's unique gift and how you appreciate and personally benefit from those gifts. Here's an example. Christy is so good at making a cozy house for people to rest in. It gives me space to be calm and get away from the craziness. And then it just has several different uh, places you can write. I love blank because he or she is so good at, and it makes me feel, um, I'm so grateful God gave them the gift of 
and it just asks you to, you know, to write down some things. Now spend a few minutes celebrating the way you contribute to the body of Christ. Brainstorm your own gifts and how they translate into the Christmas season. Think through even the most practical way, ways God has gifted you and how you might use your gifts to spread joy to others this season. Here's an example. I love to celebrate other people through words. During Christmas, I want to drop notes off for friends to encourage them and let them know how thankful I am for their friendship. And then another blank to fill in. I have fun when I blank. This Christmas, I'm going to take time to do just this, and I'll invite blank to do it with me so we can have fun together and create new memories. God has given me the gift of, you fill in the blank, this holiday season, I'm going to use this gift to encourage, encourage others by, and you fill in the blank. God is so good. He showed me kindness when I blank. Because of this, I want to show kindness. This Christmas season, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to, and you fill in the blank. That's all for today, but I do think it's very important to know your gifts. Know the the things that you contribute to your family, to your friends. Um, sometimes it's just a smile. Sometimes you have nothing to give. You're tired, but you can always be kind. You can always, if you put others in that place, then you're not, you're not focusing on you. And if you're going through a hard time, sometimes the best way to not feel so down is just to help somebody else. Focus on somebody else's needs instead of your own, and honestly, it makes it makes everybody feel better. It makes me feel better, definitely, to, to do that. So focus on what you have to offer, and hopefully this helps you this year not to feel inadequate or not enough. God made you exactly as you are, and He made you, it is not a mistake. Anything in your life, anything you are or who you are is not a mistake, and it should be celebrated because it is a gift from God to others. All right. I hope you have a very blessed day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.